Hello everybody, welcome to this not so regularly scheduled video. So here's the thing, I did this podcast a while back with this person named Shakti Hari called the Design Convo Podcast. We talked about my journey, my a bunch of things that I went through, the financial aspects, mostly the financial aspects of being an independent artist. So what I thought was I wanted to sort of take that episode and share it here on my channel. So that's what this video is all about. This is this one long podcast. So uh, I thought it might add value to one or two of you. You might, if you listen to it fully, you might get something that will work for you. So anyway, so here's the podcast. And uh, from the next one, I'll just be back with my own podcast. So yeah, also check out Chuck Theory's uh, podcast. Links are down below in the description. So let's get into it. The Design Convo Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Design Convo Podcast, where we interact with creative individuals from the design industry to learn things that otherwise are a bit difficult to understand on your own, especially when you're starting as designers and illustrators. So the show will be a safe space where we ask questions that might sound silly, but make a huge difference in our lives. So I'm your host, Shakti Hari, and I'm going to ask the question on everyone's behalf. Um, I'm doing great today, and I have something else to feel good about today. Yes, uh, you got it right. We have a fantastic illustrator slash storyteller with us, and he is also a creative entrepreneur. So he's the man responsible for thousands of people all around the globe to pick up their pencils and start sketching something every single day for 100 days a year. Uh, yes, he started the 100 days of sketching challenge that took the internet by storm. Simply put, this is an intelligent guy who knows how to do things independently. To be honest, we actually scheduled the podcast session about I don't know, around December 2021, and we had to keep postponing it due to various reasons from both of our ends. And just three weeks ago, Kish and his team were affected by bloody COVID. So, and fortunately, and finally, we are here, and I can't tell you how excited I am to do this. So, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Kesh of Ratnavel, or Kesh, as the millennials and the Gen Z know him on the internet. Welcome to the show, Kesh. It's hey, an man, absolute thank you. honor to host you. No, no, my, right. my pleasure, uh, my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Uh, Sorry, you can hear, still hear me, right? I'm just, just. I can, I can, I can. All yeah, right, yeah, all right. right. Well, look, well, that, that's, that's the honest way we started. Then, <laughs> all right. Uh, one, that's one hell of an intro. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, two, right, man, you. I just want to say this: you have a really nice setup in the back. <laughs> Looks really Thank nice. Thank you so much, man. You know, you, you got, have you been one it. of the inspirations to do things on my own, so I have been setting up my space. So uh, I used to live yeah, in Bangalore that's... almost a year back. Uh -huh. And uh, when COVID happened, I moved back with my parents and it's a small house. So I rented a it's small it's... property nearby. Uh, now it's uh -huh. kind of my studio and it, it's been really amazing. That is clever. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. That is great. That is great. You know, same here, yeah. same here. Like where is it? Like I literally rented <laughs> out a space uh, near my, uh, you know, my own place and yeah it's, it's mm -hmm. serving really well We're slightly mm -hmm. outgrowing it right now so yeah mm -hmm. I mean, eventually yeah it's a good it's a good good progression good progression so Kesh, you know i did a lot of background uh you know i shouldn't say check uh i in fact stalked mm -hmm. you over the past couple of weeks looking at what you've been up to uh you know for the audience can you give us a you know a short introduction in your own words so we can take us through the entire journey or walk through Right. Short introduction about myself, is it? Yeah. Oh, oh boy. No, no, you, <laughs> you, you're, you're trapping me right there. All right. <laughs> Who am I? Well, that's an existential question. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's start with a simple answer. I am an illustrator at first, mm -hmm. at, at heart, an artist, a draftsman, a character designer. I love making videos. I love filmmaking. Hence, I started a YouTube channel and started posting videos there, trying to combine my uh, love for filmmaking and art and trying to find a middle ground between that. And then storytelling. I love telling stories. You know, I think it's one of the most important aspects of my uh, creativity. And uh, I've done a bunch of things online. I like teach people through my programs and courses. And I... Uh, you know, try to run a yearly challenge called 100 Days of Sketching, uh, mm -hmm. you know, where we like simply just draw off every day for like six minutes a day. <laughs> you know, that is that is that is pretty much it. You know, this is what I do. This is what I do. 
Okay. It's so you know, though you sound so humble, you are not. <laughs> yeah uh, man yeah I'm, i'm you know when when you were when you were uh, wait before that as a uh, soon to be animation filmmaker <laughs> that's that's oh, that's that, what that's... that's what i'm yeah that's what i'm going after right right now so it's slowly coming to fruition all the financial foundations have been trying to lay down over the past few years and like slowly building mm-hmm. up to animation is it's slowly coming to fruition but yeah anyways well, the thing uh, thing was even when you were like talk uh, you know we were you were uh, going through the intro right i didn't realize i did i did these things it it, it was mm-hmm. kind of one surreal and uh, <laughs> two it it sort of scares me in a way that you know i i really feel it might it might get to my head you know mm-hmm. that is that is a big uh, problem that i have which is like ego like ma- managing my ego and and trying to stay humble so i like i go ex- i try to play myself as a humble person but i don't think internally i'm a humble person so yeah <laughs> you you are man you are uh, you know looking at how i have been talking and taking things all over the internet you are really a humble guy and uh, yeah. you know uh, one thing which i noticed about mm-hmm. getting a time slot from a calendar right so mm-hmm. it's always like it falls on thursday and especially at 2 to 3 so i i for some reason can sense that you have mm. you are a person who ha- follows a strict um timeline i would say have a set of habits and mm-hmm. workflow through the day so how do, how does a day in your life look like well so a day in my life looks like this so the the reason i try to push meetings to the afternoon is because mm-hmm. <coughs> excuse me <coughs> i try to sort of get done uh, the most important task of the day earlier in the day so so here's mm-hmm. how my general uh, framework for a day goes Mm-hmm. i wake up i do my morning routine which uh, which has been you know 10 minutes of meditation and like a bit of journaling and then i like stretch for a bit while my mom or grandma makes me black coffee right like <laughs> no sugar that's that's how that's how i want it right and uh, you know i drink my coffee and then work out that's that's mm-hmm. another so i i try to fo- uh, follow like five to six uh, habits every day so that mm-hmm. i feel like i have saved my day from being wasted because in the past i've wasted a lot of days you know when mm-hmm. when i was done with college and when i was done with uh, high school i was just roaming around trying to find things trying to understand things and is like explore and do all that stuff and i couldn't exactly uh, you know <clears throat> make the most out of my days right mm-hmm. so I try to follow like five to six habits. One is one trying to wake up early, six to seven o'clock, and then mm-hmm. so this is very recently actually. I just my sleep schedule was very messed up. I'm I'm no perfect person. I used to like go to bed at like twelve o'clock, twelve one o'clock, or two o'clock sometimes, and then uh, you know wake up at like nine or ten ten a.m. in the morning, and that All affected right. work. So the first habit is wake up six to seven a.m. uh I try and that's been going well recently then do my morning routine which has sort of been the same something similar like this for the past 6 7 years almost mm-hmm. so the, the meditation the journaling the exercising in the morning for like 30 to 45 minutes i get that thing done come to work uh i always try to make a to do list the night before and if i don't make a to do list the night before i'm like uh, i'm like clueless for the following day so i like try to like write down all the things i wish i can get done the next day and uh, usually uh, it's just like three things maximum three things that i want to get done and so i focus on the most important task of the day most of the time right for example today right like today today and yesterday it was just so tiring for me i don't know why i couldn't do anything productive quote on quote productive mm-hmm. this this today morning i was just thinking about a particular uh, decision that i need to make so i was like sitting okay. down for like one one and a half hours writing uh, uh, you know like so the, the way i think is like try to write things down and see put all the options down and and, and see which one works well so it isn't mm-hmm. I, i don't consider that work work but you know i i try to do that so okay. some days are productive some days are not so i try to get these three three things done and then what go home lunch then back to work and then go home then watch tv and go to go to bed i have a very simple boring life actually 
no that that actually sounds fun because you know uh, you have this uh, should i call it uh, the ability to be independent so when you work for you know some of the former companies right you always have mm-hmm. things coming up that actually messes up your sleep cycle or your workout routine or anything even oh, yeah. slots like lunch yeah and do that so oh, that's, that's uh, since you yeah since you are talking I, about I know you know that, um, know that. <laughs> that that uh, you know i have a question coming up uh, next so which is which is actually connects these things and uh, sure. you know since you mentioned about uh, you know passing out of college and um, mm-hmm. roaming the streets and actually pursuing art once you pass out of college so how right. how was the journey for you what did you actually study major in and how did you end up as right, an artist right well let's say hmm i think i think the reason why you're probably asking this question is so that you know you can find relatability and see how one can actually go make that transition right from college and passing out of college to sort yeah. of you know making yourself yeah. out, out making yeah. making it as an independent artist well i'll try mm-hmm. to sort of answer it in that context uh mm-hmm. one so i study bsc electronic media that means sort of filmmaking but it's not mm-hmm. filmmaking uh, okay we did some filmmaking we studied it was a lot of theoretical knowledge which i didn't find helpful mm-hmm. and i studied that in college i uh, studied that because i knew that i'll have time for youtube which okay. was was not true because i just went to college wasted most of my time and uh, you know speaking of wasting days right i wasted a lot of my days on very unproductive things it didn't help out mm-hmm. and so I, i finished college and the day i finished college so i come from a not so good uh, well off family financially you know okay uh, mm-hmm. was, even though i look like it, it, look, it definitely look like it speak like it and talk like it uh, mm-hmm. you know people mistake me for this super uh, i don't i don't know it's, it's 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 a thing that it's a thing in india right you you got a fairly yeah. uh, lighter skin guy who has an accent makes yeah. uh, youtube videos online and all of a sudden man his parents must be bloated man like they're rich and all that <laughs> stuff right that that's yeah. not the case with with me at least right so we were struggling financially so on the very last day of my exam uh, i got a job interview i, I just applied for tons of jobs actually I, okay. so i i uh, on the very last day of my exam i finished my exam my friend dropped me at the bus stand i, I catch a bus to the city and then go from there go to the office attend the job interview and i landed the job because i had a youtube channel right okay. i worked there for like 7 to 8 months then there is this thing that hits me right which is like this is not me right this is not me mm-hmm. like me sitting because i i know what my potential is sometimes i do sometimes i don't uh sometimes i just felt that during that job it was a good job though you know it was a very fun job at an ad agency doing what i loved right it was video graphy what's what a yeah, video producer that was my okay. uh, job title uh okay. but i felt like i could do a lot more with the talent uh, that i had mm-hmm. and you know i just worked there for a couple of months like 6 7 months or 8 months and after that i couldn't just take it you know uh okay. partly because you know my, my may uh what can i say there was this little inkling inkling in me is like man I, th- i think you can just go and do this thing on your own by yourself and mm-hmm. probably make a bit more money than you're at the job right if 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 you yeah. know how to actually get clients and how to get freelance and all that stuff yeah so i did that for a year i was just broke <laughs> for 2016 okay. all of 2016 is like broke 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 <laughs> broke okay. and again broke right so but but during that time what i did was i uh, you know took freelance jobs that paid mm-hmm. me right okay. so it like, was paying me a little here paying me a little there so, and back then youtube didn't make my youtube didn't make any money not even like okay. a single dime mm-hmm. right i was doing uh, youtube at that point for like 5 or 6 years it didn't click it didn't work out and because i wasn't good actually that is the reason right so so one of the things i try to remind myself is like if, if something is not working out most of most of the time it's probably you most of the time 
right? It's just, okay. You just need to level up your skills. If if okay. if you're not getting the results that you want, it's mm-hmm. it's not some random external factor that isn't that's against you. It's more ninety percent of the time you need to level up the skills. So mm-hmm. I didn't. Uh, I wasn't that good at making YouTube. Twenty seventeen, I really started to zone it. Right, okay. because I I don't like to you know uh, what do you say. I don't like to be a burden on my family. I want to be the provider, not the taker, right? Mm-hmm. So I was uh, I was really focused. 2017, uh, 2016, a bunch of things happened as well. So I I think I, I think my journey is is mine, and I don't think most people need to really look at what is going to work for them and really find it. For mm-hmm. me, I've ever since I was a kid, ever since I was a kid, money used to be a big problem. Like financially, it, it was just hard, and yeah. and uh, I remember my mom. You know, she, she her struggling to keep up the family and then all that. And ever since I was a kid, I was like, I'm gonna solve this thing. I used to have nightmares actually. Like I had so much of a problem with this. I used to have nightmares. I, I once had a nightmare like that. I was in Australia, right? I've never been to Australia, but I was in Australia with my mom. And we weren't uh, let inside of a shop because we were poor. They like they literally kicked us out. So I was like that 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 feeling felt really bad. And mm-hmm. I woke up and it's like I need to do something about this thing, right? And 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 there were a couple of other situations that put me in a place where I was like, mm, this is it, no more. Not only I'm going to make it as an artist, I'm going to be a rich. Mm-hmm freaking artist right like i'm gonna be loaded with money that's 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 that is like do what i absolutely love serve mm-hmm. people to the maximum fullest of my capabilities create the most useful products and make a lot of money it's like that's simple right now money is not a big goal so th- the thing was though right i don't know what happened even though I, the money part was a big requirement i never went after money right Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm going to do the thing that I love. I'm going to okay. be of service to other people, either mm-hmm. through entertainment or education or any way, shape or form. And okay. then, you know, uh, things might happen. That's that's what I was, I was. I was watching a lot of Gary Vee back then. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Uh, so 2016, it was like that. 2017, I gave myself 100 days, right? Literally, uh, I gave myself mm-hmm. 100 days, told myself, in 100 days, I'm going to make my YouTube work. I'm going to make this okay. damn thing work. If it doesn't work, guess what? I still have the skills. I can go get a job, right? So yeah. I like put a little, uh, what do you say? Like a little 100 days to go on my whiteboard. And, okay. and every single day, I'll make some progress. It wasn't like I was just like working every so hard every single day. I was, I was doing a lot of work on one day. One day, I'll just do a little. I try to make progress every single little day, right? I was like mm-hmm. trying my best. That's so that's amazing, right? So I follow this psychologist guy. His name is Jordan Peterson. And he, he says this, uh, work as hard as you can on one mm-hmm. thing and see what happens. I don't know him back then. I didn't know this particular principle back then, but that's what I did. I like worked really hard as I can on YouTube and boom, within like 60, 70 days, one of my videos clicked and then all of a sudden went wide. It's, it's, it's probably because of the effort that you put in and, and the, 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 the surrounding and the environment is like, yep, yeah, you know what, let's give it to him. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's how that it, it worked. Then I went from like 7,000 subscribers to like 40,000 subscribers and like uh, then 40 went to 70. But that's also because of all the work that I've been putting in for the past five years. People were like coming in and looking at the recent video mm-hmm. and they saw that video. I was like, man, that's some good quality videos. And they went back to the old stuff and said, man, this guy's been doing it for like a long time right now. I'd like to probably watch all of this thing. So yeah. it, it sort of happened like that. Then I started teaching, which I didn't know that I liked teaching uh, and, and, and not to boost my own ego. I don't, I don't like to do that most of the time. But I, I think I do have a really good skill for teaching. Like I can really understand concepts and dissect concepts and like, like convey it to people in such a way that they can learn and set up systems yeah. in such a way that they can actually you know, really get good at this thing. So I started teaching workshops and all that. So by 2018, right, I was making a decent money of just YouTube alone, 
like 2018 mm-hmm. 2019 it it paid me enough to it paid me like a good indian accountant job you know mm-hmm. like a okay. ca or like a ca trainee working in a firm and all that you know it was paying me that much and you mm-hmm. know life was fine but but uh, the, the, here's the thing though so you let's say you have like a goal right i had a goal like i'm going to make this much like 50k 70k per month right mm-hmm. once i achieved that goal some sort of a like a void came in i was like ah that's it what i'm going to do right now i don't know right and <laughs> and it was boring it was so boring for like a long period of time and i like stopped youtube then started youtube again i didn't know what i was doing then then eventually it came to a point it's not about like chasing after these goals it's it's about like doing projects one bit at mm-hmm. a time and being useful with your time that's it like like yeah. there's no maximum end purpose magical thing at the end it's just like do something useful keep doing that yeah you'll you'll be fine right so that's my working principle right now so then 100 days of sketching started that blew up then drawing mm-hmm. camp started that blew up and then mm-hmm. uh, you know then here we are and hopefully next step is animation hopefully that will blow up <laughs> right so i mean blew up in the sense when i say blow up it'll be like, oh is it like mr beast blow up no, no, no. it's like <laughs> my my kind of level of success is like yeah the standard is okay. slightly low <laughs> so yeah that's that's does that give you like a clear picture or oh my god it, it gives the entire picture man so that that okay. has been the uh, i don't know that's the most inspiring thing i heard in a couple in a couple of weeks so in fact i'm, I'm no. kind of getting goosebumps here <laughs> yeah. thanks for one, sharing one more thing you know? i one more thing i'd like to add to that right so mm-hmm. it it so so one of the things that i would say to like people who are trying to come up is slowly invest things that you earn little by little mm-hmm. by little into your business meaning you are your business meaning mm-hmm. If you want to make money with your art you need to treat yourself like a business because you know mm-hmm. you, need, you need to be disciplined you need to know what you're offering you need mm-hmm. to do a lot of things and mm-hmm. invest things so when i had little money what i do is i mm-hmm. take some of it for my personal purposes and take most mm-hmm. of it put it back in like i buy a new microphone i'd buy a new mm-hmm. camera a new lens and then i'll think like okay what would make my videos better then uh, with very little money i had i had i hired my first ever employee and first mm-hmm. first actually went with an intern because i couldn't afford an employee i, I, okay. I pay like a nice internship salary then i okay. went to my uh, part time employee then i came mm-hmm. to my full time person and then came my second full time the third one the fourth one and the fifth one so it's like it was like one little step at a time but when you look back at things and you'll be like oh boy that's that's uh you know that's that's a lot of progress i mean even mm-hmm. even a couple of days back i was just drawing a, a, a where are you from actually i'm from this uh place called jayankondam it is a small oh, town in arilu district it's in arilu district near trichy near trichy okay So yeah, so Tamil yeah. Tamil person then. All right. Yeah. Uh and so so I'm in Chennai. I was driving mm-hmm. by uh I think Tinagar. Mhm. Right? So I was literally driving by Tinagar after mm-hmm. going to my auditor's office talking about accounts and like filing taxes and everything. And mm-hmm. uh I've never done any of these things, right? Like I I've, I've been only doing it for the cup the past couple of years you know because okay. all all of these things when you start a business you're like man that means stuff is like boring uh <laughs> but you need to take care of those things right yeah. so i was just going by and and remember like 6 years back i was literally standing there waiting for a bus with like 200 rupees in my pocket and i was like man life life has been good for me i had like 200 rupees in my pocket and 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 paying i'm paying tons and i'm, I'm like I was worried about like paying a lot of taxes because I need to be paying a lot of taxes that's 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 the thing like but people like pay your damn taxes it's it's good it's better to pay your taxes right so I was like you know you know but but a huge chunk of your money goes away to the government right uh I, I was I was a little a little bit you know nervous about that I was like man uh, I need to pay that that much okay fine I'll pay it I was just worried about that then when I went through that road is like I was I had just had 200 bucks wow what am I worried about <laughs> right <laughs> so and, you know it, it was like a stark uh, little uh, thing so yeah 
it'll, it'll, it'll happen, right? I, I think people just need to like keep on progressing, keep on investing things in the right places in the right time and things will happen for them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, talking about investing back, uh, I also mm -hmm. went through a video of yours where you say uh, you took a loan from a bank to get your first camera. Yes. Yes. That's, I, the, I that's the first time I could... I didn't know you could get a loan to buy a camera until then. Oh, you didn't? Oh, what, didn't what you need to do is you need to treat yourself <laughs> like a business, right? So here, here's what I did. I just went to the bank manager, showed her my YouTube channel. Thank, thankfully, okay. thank her. God bless her soul. She uh, <laughs> showed her my YouTube channel and told, hey, this is the business. Mm -hmm. This is the earning potential, right? I used to make this much in my day job. And I can make this much right now. I've been doing freelancing and all that. And mm -hmm. I need money. It wasn't a business loan. It was a personal loan. But still, I explained mm -hmm. her my business because the bank need. I didn't have like a good transaction record and all that back then. Mm -hmm. like, who cares about like 100 and 200 rupee transactions? Right? So I, I showed her that my, I told her, I gave her my confidence. I told her, you know what, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll probably, you know, sell this thing back. And, uh, you know, thankfully... <laughs> They were they were good. They gave me my first loan. I made my YouTube. Uh, uh, I made a couple of videos with that, and then I got another loan. Now, by the way, right? So looking back, maybe I didn't have to take that loan. To be to be honest, I could have done that in a different way. Uh, I'm a mm -hmm. big believer of not taking on any debt right mm -hmm. like don't take on any debt even like you know most banks will call you up and they say hey you you've got a pre-approved personal loan for like 18 percent don't yeah. do it and especially uh, uh good advice which i got was never do business on borrowed money because you're yeah. just earning the borrower more money than uh, you know you making yourself except for a home loan if you know what you're doing go get it Right. I'd, I'd mm -hmm. watch Dave Ramsey's advice on like getting home loans and all like that. He's like a financial advisor, but okay. never, never borrow, never borrow, never take debt for the most part. Mm -hmm. Use it as a leverage if you know what you're doing. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I didn't course, take that loan <laughs> and yeah. I paid it off. I paid it off with like my, my, yeah, my day job money. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I totally agree, man. Uh, so becoming financially independent is like every designer's dream, right? So mm -hmm. how do you think a creative individual uh, should uh, plan mm -hmm. his or her streams of income? So what are the streams of income that mm -hmm. any budding designer can work on and leverage throughout their life? Right. Okay. So I'll, I'll give you like a probably I'll try to articulate like a step by step thing or at least what mm -hmm. has worked for me. Right. Mm -hmm. So one it is good to think in terms of streams of income, having multiple mm -hmm. streams of income, right? But okay. uh, as the popular saying goes, chase two rabbits, you catch neither one, right? So it is always good to pick a quote-unquote opportunity vehicle, meaning a space, a product, or a service where you can earn a lot, right? You pick that particular space and you go all into that space, right? It's better for you to actually focus on one thing, make that stream of income a solid 80% of your income, and then using the money from that particular stream, then trying to build another stream. But it shouldn't take away from the focus of the first stream, right? Because when you try to do multiple things, you tend to lose focus, right? So any creative person who's trying to start out, I'd say this. See what you're good at, right? That is first step. See what you're good at. And then step two, literally, I, I, I'd like for people, I'll, I'll try to imagine this like a practical step. First step, see what you're good at. Write it down on your uh, journal or notebook or rough note or whatever you use, right? First, write that thing uh, down. Number two, see business works in two different ways. One is product or service. When I'm like making YouTube videos, I'm providing a service for people. I'm providing entertainment, education, information, and I'm like trying to teach them. I'm trying to like, you know, share them my journey and show them what I've been doing. So that is like a service, right? Product is if you some may, uh, make something digital or physical, right? So see what you're good at. And two, step two is, See what kind of a product or a service that you can create that has a good 
opportunity at the top, meaning it can scale to higher levels. For example, if you go into merchandising, right? Most people, you know, the first thing that they do is merchandising. Fun fact, if you're not doing a lot of volume on merchandising, meaning you, if you're not selling thousands and thousands of units per month, you're not going to make a sustainable uh, living selling merchandise. Mm -hmm. Unless if you're like focusing on a very unique product that stands out in the market. Uh, if you're starting out with like a very simple thing like t-shirts, mugs, posters and prints and all that thing, there's, there's so much competition in that market and it's, it's so saturated. Uh, most people won't, uh, you know, do that well. Uh, unless we're like very few who have been doing it for a long time or who are doing it in a slightly different way, right? So why, why did I say this? Like... Yeah, pick pick something that has like a higher chance of growth, right? And really push hard on that particular thing, right? Create some sort of a product, create some sort of a service and, and make sure it is something that is very, very different. That is step three, right? Step one, step two, and step three. Make sure it's super different. Step four is you create, sit down and create that product. Right, you sit down, you make that particular product. If it's going to take a very long time for you to make it, like 1.5 years, one year, and two years, then what you do is split it into phases, right? Many little phases, and start with the first phase. Try to make a minimum viable product, right? See if your idea works out, right? Because most people spend so much time building their product or service for like so long of a time, and when they launch it, that's crickets, right? Like the, nobody buys it, right? There's no market for that thing. So the first step is like design the product or service, try to test it in the market, see if people actually want it. Uh, a, a lesson from my own experience is I try to make posters and prints on my first thing, right? I like put together all these complex things, like I printed a bunch of posters, got the stickers down, bought the poster tube. I was ready to ship hundreds and hundreds of posters. And when I launched it, guess how many people bought it? Five. I saw like five <laughs> posters, right? So okay. then I realized people didn't want posters. People wanted something exclusive. And and people people do want posters, obviously. But, but you know, it, it takes time. It takes time, right? So first, you need to know the, the kind of thing that the market wants, your audience wants. You need to know what that particular thing is. And you need to design that particular thing. And you need to test it in such a way that even if it fails, you don't fail, right? Let's say let's say you're you're spending five thousand rupees creating your product or thousand rupees creating your product, right? Mm -hmm. Even if that you launch that product, you test that product, you like put it out to your followers and you say or like your thing and you say, hey, guess what? This is here. Buy it. Nobody buys it. You should survive. That is business lesson number two that I follow, which is like. Uh, take calculated risks in the sense like mm -hmm. don't gamble but ca uh, risks in such a way that even if you take that risk even if it fails your head will be above water right so that's that's one of the uh, things so yeah test your products if it works scale put more out make your product bigger make your product better and then uh, know that Creating your product or service is not only the first thing, you need to also market it, which is two very, very important thing. I've, I've created tons of things, man, I'm telling you, right? I, I've created things that I think people would like and it failed. And I've created things that I know that people would like and people did like, but it didn't do well because I didn't tell people that it existed, right? Okay. So people need to know your stuff exists. And you mm. need to find creative ways because you don't want to go and advertise them. It's like, oh, yeah, hey, here, here's my product, buy it. And that's like the old way of doing things, right? Yeah, you, you got to do it in a slightly creative way, in a in a way that that speaks to them, right? So create something and put it out there. Uh, yeah. One last thing before I end this answer, right? I would highly recommend this book called Rework by Jason Fry. Mm. Jason Fry or Jason yeah. Fried? I, I can't pronounce his name. I love that book. That book has been sort of like my Bible for the past two years in terms of like business and thinking. And I would highly recommend that uh, book to any creative entrepreneur to sort of, you know, read. It's so short, so simple. Read that, follow it to the T, you'll be fine. All right. Thanks for sharing mm -hmm. this, man. Uh, it, it's sure, like sure. 
pretty detailed yeah We're talking about communities and mm-hmm. uh, you know getting an mev to the market uh, so mm-hmm. to get feedback and to interact with people mm-hmm. you should i feel i personally feel that you should have a strong community that actually supports your work who actually buys your work and you have a wonderful and large community on all social platforms mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. what do you think is the influence of uh, you know building a community especially if you are a independent or a freelance artist it is important right it is important to have like a community build your following and all that but that shouldn't be the sole focus mm-hmm. because this day and age i think i think the follower count seems like your badge of honor right now right like how much yeah. followers you have as as a yeah. person you know who when i had like 4000 followers my dream goal was like 100000 followers like oh wow mm-hmm. 1 lakh people following me that is amazing yeah once you reach that thing i think i think the same thing with money and all that right once you reach that thing it's all for so it is uh, yeah. the point is okay I'm, i'm digressing it is important to build a community and like have following and all that mm-hmm. it is easier to sort of you know take your product and give it to themselves so i think i've seen so many products and services who have started with zero followers and have mm-hmm. really built up only based on the sole quality of their product meaning it's it's actually way better you know instead if you if you, if you really want to I, i if i were starting over again what i would probably do is structure myself like a business instead of like a personality you know like cash yeah. the guy right i would structure myself like a business and and like something like think of think of like apple right you think of apple you don't think of like a company you think of like quality or you think of like overpriced phones and <laughs> just kidding <laughs> right so but but uh you know you think of something more than just a company they, at least they try they try to do mm. something beyond phones and ipads right so yeah it is also a good way uh, i've i've seen i've seen a tons of business examples the best way to be like a good creative entrepreneur right look at people outside your field uh, i've noticed certain companies in the food space right one is called the protein brownie feel mighty yeah feel mighty uh, they sell protein brownies how clever is that people love to eat brownies but it's too much calorie so they get fat yeah and yeah. Uh, what they did was they lowered the calories and put it full of, full of protein and it's like bro mm-hmm. protein brownies so like i buy packs and packs of that and I eat it like a kid so <laughs> and and there's another thing called brooklyn creamery it's low okay. calorie ice cream and it's only mm-hmm. 75 calories or 65 calories per like 100 grams a uh, 100 gram ice cream is usually like 3 400 calories right yeah. so it's it's like you get to have your ice cream and not put on too much weight right it's yeah. bad for your gut though i mean uh, i don't like it but yeah this is like see how clever that thing is right oh uh, another yeah. example uh, is is uh, is my is my i've known him uh, ronak mangotha right okay so Uh, he's the creator of fully filmy so what they did was mm-hmm. they took their passion and love for films and mm-hmm. put it on merchandises and t-shirts and right now they're like one of the largest uh, what do you say film merchandise companies in uh, the country right yeah so yeah. it's 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 they started out as a company they didn't start out as a personality they literally i, I was there I, i mean i wasn't yeah. technically there but i was mm-hmm. nearby somewhere there in the sense mm-hmm. the people the ad agency which i worked at who where i worked mm-hmm. at uh three people out of those agency before i came in like a month or two ago they quit their jobs and went and started out their thing so okay. you know so that's how i sort of you know came to know about these people and they started okay. out with like one instagram post and like 30 followers or 40 followers and look where they are right now right so yeah. and they're like doing big so yeah you can do both ways build yourself mm-hmm. like a creative person and then offer your audience a product or a service that you can buy or mm-hmm. you can just start yourself like a business treat yourself like a business and do things uh okay. one reading material that i would give people right there is this mm-hmm. thing called 1000 true fans uh, okay an article called 1000 true fans by kevin kelly the thing is this mm-hmm. you don't need hundreds and thousands of fans right you don't need okay. you just need 1000 true fans who would buy your mm-hmm. stuff think okay. about it you just need 1000 true fans who buys your stuff like what 49 dollars per year Right, thousand mm-hmm. people buying your stuff for forty nine thousand dollars, forty nine dollars. 
So you're making $49,000 per year. And how hard it is to build 1,000 true fans. It's not that hard. I you just need to like really like find people and like go add value to them. Hey, here's what. Yeah. Let me help you out. Here's what. Let me be of service to you. Here's what. Uh, here's the thing that might help you. Like go yeah. be go serve and it will come back. That's the yeah. thing though. All right. Man, hmm. you know that the recommendations you have been giving, it's been amazing. So... Oh, yeah. What are the books, <laughs> books, podcasts, and uh, you know authors would you recommend to especially artists and from business perspective? All right, so rework is definitely one. That one thing mm-hmm. ha- helped me. Uh, there okay. are very few books in my life that really helped me. Right, it was okay. like mm-hmm. life changing. I, I buy copies of that book and keep it. Like try to give it to other people. Uh, one is rework. The other one mm-hmm. is the one thing by uh, the name of the book is like. The One Thing by Gary Keller yeah. and Jay Papasan or Papasan. Okay. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not familiar again with the name. Uh, that book is all about focus, like focusing on one particular thing, going after that, right? Like go, go all in on that, right? So that is one. Dr. Jordan Peterson, uh, he's, a, he's been a massive freaking influence on the way I do work. And most people think he's like a right wing racist transphobic sexist person but he is not he is okay. he's, he's such an articulate uh very thoughtful probably very kind person as well mm. and definitely knows a lot about the realities of life i've been listening to a lot of his lectures and uh, you know and most of his lectures online has really helped me to put myself together i would recommend gary v Gary Vee, mm-hmm. the entrepreneur. I don't know what, what is up with the hate that he's getting online right now these days because he's been a bit too pushy with his content. Probably that's that's one of the reasons. But his underlying message is very good. Like add value, mm-hmm. right? That's where I got most of my business principles. Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk. That is the yeah. book which I read back in 2015 or 2016. I was trying to understand business. <clears throat> so that is one good book. Uh, people can, it lays down the principles of online media see see the thing is you need to know how to how to run and how to be an artist and how to run a business two skills right you need to know how to do that even if it's not the online or the internet age because the principles for running the business are the same uh, the tactics changes depending on environment and content uh, you know the the times we are in so yeah, that is that's one thing. So Gary V, Jordan Peterson, rework the one thing. Uh, Jake Parker's uh, work, any any his, his podcast, three point perspective. I would highly recommend that. You know, good good podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the creative pep talk uh, by Andy J Pizza. I've, I've Pizza, seen. I've, yeah. I've, I don't listen to a lot of that uh, right now, but but I used to listen mm-hmm. to a lot of that. Who else? Hmm. Yeah, these these are the people. Steal like an artist. Austin Cleon, Austin Cleon's mm-hmm. books, three books. Steal like an artist. Keep going, and show your work. Like yeah. really honest and good books that people can uh, read. So these are all like the okay. resources. Tim Ferriss, man, oh. I'm just adding so much stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tim, yeah, Tim sure Ferriss podcast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim Ferriss Those has uh, had such an influence in my life. I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of his Four Hour Work Week book. Oh, yeah? I don't know. I, I don't know if that's like kind of oh, overrated yes. or something. Four hour work week. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think I think I need to reread that book actually. I think yeah. I have completely different because because the last time I read it I was broke. <laughs> right now, right now I just need to like go reread it again and yeah. uh, you know see from a new different uh, perspective. Mm. Because uh, yeah, hmm, that's that's a really good book. That's a great way to set up a business. Yeah, and then the it. facts he pulls up and the way he asks you to, you know, get out of the mundane work and all the responsibilities, it's like it hits you hard every single time I read it. And oh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, you know what? One thing which I, uh, I, I'm derailing from this topic entirely, of course. And yeah, uh, one thing which I noticed about the drawing camps and the courses uh, which are up on mm-hmm. your website, and. Right. Uh, Believe me, when I tell this, I've seen so many other artists who actually put up courses. Why uh-huh. do you price them as low as possible? Is there an intention behind it or what's what's the story behind it? 
I was too broke to buy courses when I started out and I was like, I'm just going to price it at low so that people can get it. So that, that okay. was the reason it started out. Okay. Then slowly okay. reality hit me that I cannot okay. just keep on pricing it too low because, you know, mm-hmm. I need to pay overhead. I need to pe- pay people because drawing cam like takes like three people to edit. And of course. Uh, right now we're done. Uh, but yeah, it's like takes people to edit and it uh, takes takes people to like manage the tech behind the web. We're like trying to build a new website right now. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah, so uh, I, I price it so that people would be useful. But I'll, I'll mm-hmm. try to tell you my honest learnings in the past year, which was people don't people people don't value cheap things. Mm-hmm. Right. Even if you put a lot of effort, for example, the work that I've put into drawing cam and the value that I've put into it, uh, the, the same kind, but half of the content, half of the information, other people are charging two ninety seven, three hundred, four four ninety seven dollars. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm pricing yeah. it at like sixty nine and eighty nine. And of course. yeah. Right. So, yeah. I'm. I'm just. Uh, I. I thought people. People. Uh, I, I. I thought that would be this one guy like me who's like dedicated enough, but probably he doesn't have the money and all that stuff. So he would go and get it and just be useful. So, and and I feel right now these days, most people, uh, you know, they buy it. So the good thing about drawing cam, the way it's structured, is in a daily format, right? So a lot mm-hmm. of people do it. The, the the completion rate is good. The completion rate is very good compared to like other online courses. But mm-hmm. I still feel like a lot of people buy it and they tell me, man, I didn't do it for like a while right now. It's like, then why okay. did you buy it? <laughs> right. <laughs> so then I realized that people need to pay something. Nothing in this world is free. Right. Yeah. If you get something for free, then that means you're the product. You're the, you, you're the thing. And yeah. uh, free is very, very expensive to give. So when mm-hmm. someone gives it something, something to you away for free, you're getting it for free, but they're paying for it somewhere else. And eventually they'll run out of money to pay for it and you'll stop yeah. getting things for free. Uh, yeah. So that is definitely going to, that's, that's a cycle, right? So yeah. uh, what I feel r- right now these days is like people need to, people need to really, you know, invest themselves. And one of the ways they can show investment of their personal commitment is through money, mm-hmm. right? One yeah. of the ways, right? It doesn't have to be all the time. But yeah, um, yeah. These days, I just I just feel like hey, I'm just not, I'm just not gonna sell drawing camera discount anymore. <laughs> just put okay. full price, and I, I yeah. I'll, I'll just keep it like this, like full price or free. Come on, check out my free courses. Mm-hmm. This is like full, there's no middle ground. I don't know. This this has been it's, it's, it's been a lot of frustration because every single time you you, you the the amount of money that I've invested in drawing cam over the past years is insane. That the mm-hmm. the things that I needed to buy. Because I try, so again, coming to business, right? Business things. So a lot of people do courses. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do courses. I want to do what I call a program. So here's here's another thing. So what I did was, I used to be a very fat kid, right? I used to be big and big and fat, meaning 95 kilos around around that range during my school years. So I used to do this program called P90X. P90X is okay. this popular fitness program. So you just put on the DVD, you press play, mm-hmm. and you just follow along, and you do the exercises and all that stuff. And I was like, man, I need something like this for drawing, right? Okay. So I try to create the P90X for drawing. So that is what drawing camp is. So you just like, you, there's like lesson, exercise, and mm-hmm. drawing to sort of, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, put that exercise into action and you're done with, within mm-hmm. 30 minutes per day, right? So yeah. that's why it sort of worked even though it's priced so cheap and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like uh, it did work well because of the structure. Yeah, so create something different, right? Like create something that is very, very different and that will work for your creative business. Of course, yeah. I totally mm-hmm. agree with that, man. You know, uh, since you mentioned about humans being the product when something is free, right? And we mm. have the metaverse and all this shit coming up. How do you <laughs> think this is going to affect us artists, uh, the industry mainly? Is I'm, it going to make a change educated. or should we adapt? Well, my ego says mm-hmm. it's going to be very bad for not just artists, for everyone. 
But okay. my rational part of me says I'm not educated enough to answer this because I don't have enough information. But mm-hmm. I would say something in the middle. Things are going to radically change in the near future, right? Mm-hmm. Like things things are going to really develop. Maybe not. Yeah. not maybe not in 10, 10, 15 years or 20 years, maybe 50 years. I don't know. Things are definitely going to change. I mean, think okay. about the world we are in right now. Couldn't even imagine it 20 years back, right? Okay. So things are going to change. The mm-hmm. art space is going to change. The need for artists will change because people mm-hmm. need to think in terms of where their services are going to and how they are making money, right? Mm-hmm. Uh it's a, it's a big thing, man. It's, it's a big cycle, actually. It's, it's so big. I don't know how to even explain it. Uh, if yeah. I start, it'll go on for hours. Uh, <laughs> so it, it is going to change. Artists, uh, I, one thing I would say is this, right? Adapt. Mm-hmm. Adapt, develop, or this is going to sound harsh, but I don't mean it as harsh. Choose to die and that is fine. Meaning uh, okay. there will be technological developments that I might like and things that I won't like. And I know when I don't adapt to those things, my business will probably go down or well, in anything that I, the money that I make would go down. At that point in time, I can, I can either choose to adapt or choose mm-hmm. to die. And I should be okay with it because I made the bet, right? I, I made the bet. I need to sleep in it. So yeah, yeah things are going to change. Get ready. <laughs> That's, that's yeah. a very bad way to put it. <laughs> that's true, man. That's totally true. Hey, uh, you mm-hmm. know what? Uh, I have one last question for you. So sure. this is a question which I've been having in my mind for a long time. Okay. So you you have a you know a, a ton of uh, platforms where you can actually build and uh, host mm-hmm. your courses like Skillshare, right? And, right. You know all these platforms, right? Uh, what right, made right, you right, right. go with your own platform or your website? First thing, right. Second thing is, uh, what what are the steps involved in setting up, uh, you know, online mm. course yourself? So, say okay. for example, someone like you or someone like me wants mm. to set up a course. What what's mm. the uh, path we have to take, and what's the steps we need to go through? All right. So, yeah, I'll I'll give you like a lot of lot of practical tips right now. So yeah. to start with, mindset number one. Know mm-hmm. that the course market is getting saturated, right? Yeah. People don't want any more courses. They're tired of courses. Mm-hmm. They don't want courses. Okay. They want a transformation. A course mm-hmm. is just a vehicle to go to that transformation. So what one needs to think of is how can you provide the transformation? It doesn't have to be a course. They just want the transformation, right? So think how you can get to the transformation, right? But speaking of courses, it's, it's uh, uh, course market is saturated. What's going to grow though? Is I think I think it's uh, the the recent data which I got was I was watching a YouTube video from another person and they said the e-learning market is going to be three hundred and sixty billion dollars by twenty twenty six. So uh, oh that's a that's a that's a huge freaking market right there. Yeah. <clears throat> so one of the reasons I decided to go with my own platform is because I had an audience and I need I knew that. Going my going and selling to selling my content to someone else, right? I'm still in their handle, right? Yeah. I go and do my course on Skillshare. I love Skillshare, by the way. I do have one class over there, but mm-hmm. I go and sell my uh, stuff over there on Skillshare. It's 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 like you don't get access to the audience. You can't reach out to them after it, and uh, you get paid pennies on the dollar. And mm-hmm. you need a huge amount of thing. It, it works for a very few set of people, right? Mm-hmm. People with huge amounts of audience. It works for them. I feel yeah. like having a small audience. Do you want to earn one penny from thousand people or ten dollars from thousand people, right? Obviously, ten dollars from thousand people, right? Yeah. So it is. It is or ten dollars. Ten dollars from hundred people, right? Mm-hmm. Pennies from thousand people or ten dollars from uh, hundred people, right? Ten dollars from hundred mm-hmm. people is way better. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, that is the reason. That was the reason that went into me putting my stuff on my own uh, platform. Now, here's the thing. Okay, here's here's the most important thing. Okay, I, I tell tell my, uh, I just told my uh, uh, editor yesterday, Praveen, co- don't copy the tactic, copy the religion, in the sense. Okay. 
I, I see a lot of artists right now. This is like, God, they, they are seeing like people making money with online courses. It's like, I'm going to make an online course, right? And I'm going to make money with it. People who are making money with online course don't make money because they're making online course. They're making money because they're good at it. In the sense, yeah. they put in years and years of work at learning mm. the craft and making something that's really, really valuable and keyword different, right? Yeah. So instead of going and trying to replicate this thing, try to actually find something. See, if you want, if you want to do courses, do it, right? Like I'm not, I'm not mm-hmm. saying I'm not strong. Go for it. I'll tell you how to do that. But try to find something that you're good at because I made drawing cam not because I'm going to make money. I didn't know that I was going to make money with drawing cam. Like mm-hmm. the, none. The, when I was making drawing cam, my idea was this. I'm going to create, I'm an investor, right? I'm an investor at heart. In the sense, I invest my time into things that will serve me in the long run. So my mm-hmm. thinking behind creating drawing cam was, ha, ah, I'm going to create something that is going to, ha- going to help my own younger self. That was the only thinking. I didn't know it was like there was like money in courses or I don't, I don't know any of that. Okay. And I just made it with like sole passion of helping myself. Mm-hmm. And then turned out a lot of people wanted that, right? So that's how it worked. Instead of making something, so I, I would say instead of copying what other people are doing, I would I'd recommend people to actually find something that you would need yourself and go and do that. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, for a, if, uh, maybe we'll speak again in two years and I'll be yeah. doing like two to three other completely different things. And you'll be like, oh, whoa, I didn't, I didn't think of that. Can artists make money like that? Like, yeah, that, that's where I'm going. Right. Of course. So, yeah. yeah. So, but if you want to create course, simple. One, know that you're qualified enough. And, and, and also don't, you don't have to be too overqualified. You don't have to be like a mm-hmm. master. Right. You need to find a middle ground where you're like good. You've gone through a solid amount of journey to actually learn, uh, actually teach people and you're mm-hmm. good at communicating, right? Because yeah. people don't want crappy courses anymore, right? Like mm-hmm. people don't want crappy courses ever, actually. <laughs> so make sure you're good at teaching. Make sure you're good at something that is key. Mm-hmm. Craft, because I, I, develop, I was developing a craft for like 15 years before drawing camp. Like 15 mm. years of like just putting out things, like trying and experimenting, learning how to draw, like failing, 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 right? So you don't have to put that much time as well, right? So another thing. <laughs> so find mm. something that you're good at. Communicate that well. Put it in a nice video format. Put it in a package that people would find it easy to make that transformation. That is the goal. They don't want a course. Keyword, yeah. right? They don't want a course. They want the transfer. When, I, when you see someone buying a uh, sketching for a beginner's course, they don't want the mm-hmm. course. They want to learn how to sketch, right? That is a thing. Yeah. And if your course fails to do that, there is no point in that course. You're just extracting money from people at that point. It's basically theft at that point. So, <laughs> so make sure, yeah, that, that, that is, I see a lot of people doing that right these days. It's really, it's yeah. like, they just putting out crappy crappy is like man really wow uh, so one of the one of the things that helped me uh, get over this hurdle of like I, th- I, n- I thought i wasn't good enough to make a course and i saw this udemy guy on udemy is like this character design course that had like three hundred thousand people uh, enrolled on yeah. it and he was literally the first lesson was like how to draw a freaking eye i was like that's not the first thing that people need to be learning <laughs> right <laughs> see even you're getting a cough out of that <laughs> i had a heart attack then <laughs> and 300 poor souls bought into that 300,000 poor souls bought into that you know and yeah. it was like you this is wrong <laughs> right so i mean see capitalism i'm a big fan like if you go do something if you do it wrong someone will come and do it better that's me. So, yeah. right? so pe- people will, uh, yeah, people will eventually come and do it better. So that's that's one of the reasons I made drawing cam. So I was like saw that and do it. So step one, no, good at something, learn to communicate mm-hmm. that thing. Choose the platform mm-hmm. through which medium through which you're going to communicate. That is step three, which is, are you going to write a book? Mitch Louie okay. writes a book, right? Uh, Mitch mm-hmm. Louie, the popular artist, right? Uh, yeah. Ross Dross makes Patreon videos. Right. I make mm. online programs. Right. So there are different ways. Choose the medium. So written or video. Right. Obviously. Mm. So one of the two. And then 
you can you can just find literally thousands of platform i started out with <laughs> teachable right you just go to teachable mm. sign up for their yeah. monthly subscription fee which is like 29 dollars or you can get a free account or mm-hmm. go to thinkific or kajabi or mm-hmm. uh, there are tons of course platforms out there you can just simply sign mm-hmm. up and create your own white label website okay. right and then you launch it you launch it you tell mm-hmm. people hey something like this exists guess what this is what i've been mm-hmm. doing this is how i've been doing it okay go do mm-hmm. it like that so that's 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 the basic thing then you need to keep on marketing it that's a, that's another thing yeah. marketing in the sense don't not just running facebook and instagram ads but like the way mm-hmm. i try to market is like add value add value add value i like tell people like here here's what here's how you can do things here's how you can do things here's mm-hmm. how you can do things and then for the fourth time i'll be like hey i have this thing if, if you want it you can get it right so mm-hmm. that is the thing that is how i do it so that's like the step by step course creation formula couple of things to watch out though you don't have don't jam pack your course with thousands and thousands of information like keep it small keep it niche right keep it sm- keep it compact and uh, yeah do it and don't sell it like an exorbitant exorbitant exuberant <laughs> price i don't know the word <laughs> shouldn't have used it in the first place <laughs> but yeah uh find a reasonable price of uh, people yeah. in the market will tell you the people will tell you it's like if it's too expensive or too you know cheap so that's how yeah. you do it Did that answer your question you did you did thanks for that wonderful yeah. answer man it, it, sure, it, sure, sure. the steps are like pretty clear great then great then. happy it helps but but know that the <laughs> clever business types are moving away from it All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. Uh to that. Um that that is the set of questions I had in mind for you Kesh. Uh if at all mm, you want sure. to add anything to the audience, please go ahead. All right. Uh I don't know. I I don't have anything uh, to add. So so what is what is your uh, what kind of audience do you have? Or uh, what what is the major demographic? Like what are the, what are they? I don't know I'm yet to figure it out so <laughs> I'm just referring okay, like to him so, so far young people yeah, uh, of course uh, so the the kind of uh, information I get from anchor anchor is the platform which I used to host by okay uh, okay so my so my meter yeah yeah it, it's mostly uh, you know people in their 20s uh, and early 30s and hmm. uh, most of them are of course artists uh, since you know people usually go from instagram to the podcast and people who subscribe or artist of course and it's ah, mostly right. right yeah okay then then i I'd, i'd like to end off at this right i yeah. because i know what i was doing when i was 20 and i'd like to give mm-hmm. like five things to keep in mind when you're in your 20s early 20s mm-hmm. right number mm-hmm. one know that you don't have to have all of it figured out because i thought i yeah. had to and i was confused because of it for a very long time no you don't mm-hmm. just pick something that you remotely like work really 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 hard at it for like a mm-hmm. couple of months don't f- be focused and see where that takes you right that is number 1 yeah. number 2 mm-hmm. would be like you might have too many passions too many things that you might want to do right yeah it is good it is fine experiment with all of them but when mm-hmm. you land on something that you think that is something that's good go all in on it instead of trying to do too many things at the same time grow that thing yeah. and then later parts of your life you can get to do so many other things number 3 mm. be patient right be patient be chill don't worry things will happen but things will happen when they need to happen not when you want them to happen because yeah. there's only i have the saying right which is either you're patient with life or life will force mm-hmm. you to be patient at the end of the day yeah. you got to be patient right yeah uh, so that is one number 4 is know that you don't deserve it that is the key thing to life you don't deserve things you go and earn them that that's how it works you don't deserve you don't deserve crap if you want something got to fight for it and and that's the mentality that has helped me and number 5 take responsibility stop complaining about how things are around you and stop complaining like why the world is out to get you and the society is trying to stop you from being an artist and you're not making money and things like that stop doing that and just take responsibility even if it is unfair right the world is unfair it is not fair it will never be fair know that 
and be okay with it. And once you're okay with it, you will grow. I'm telling yeah. all of this because I had the exact problems when I was young and I'm just basically giving this cheat sheet for myself. Right. Yeah. Of course. I just, I just, I just love this Yellowstone quote. I was watching Yellowstone in the series of the day on Amazon Prime. I'll finish off with this quote. And so it's like uh, uh, the the old rancher character, Kevin Costner and a young boy, they were talking about fairness. What is fair? Mm-hmm. Right. And then why isn't why isn't things fair? Right. And then Kevin Costner's character, right? John Dutton says, like, nothing in the world is fair. Right. Yes. Uh, fairness is what wait what what does he say it's like one side wins something in a way that the other side can't complain right one side wins something in a way that the other side can't complain and he'll finish off with saying like there's no such thing as fairness and that is true right so yeah i mean see there are fair people yeah, I think I'm sorry. I don't want to paint a pessimistic picture. There are fat people, <laughs> but fairness is a yeah. personal responsibility, not a societal responsibility. That is what I'm trying to say, right? Of course, you can choose to treat yeah. people fair, right? But, the, but you can't, can't expect other people to, to, yeah, treat you fairly, right? That will that, yeah. that won't work out. So yeah, mm-hmm. those are the things, man. Of course, of course. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing all these insights with us, man. Uh, you know sure, what? Sure. Uh, this this entire past one hour it's mostly about dealing with finances as an artist and having oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah i i might as well you know possibly uh, title it in such terms you know talking <laughs> yeah feel free yes. feel free I don't <laughs> mind. how to Something make like money that. as an artist <laughs> <laughs> another another crappy video on the internet <laughs> <laughs> possibly <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, you got me in it, right? No, man. Uh, you know, jokes aside, this, jokes aside, mm-hmm. this this has been like really, really insightful. I don't, mm. I don't know how you remember the names of all the books and uh, all these people when you read and I don't know, man. It's, it's like your mom and dad, right? Like you remember your mom, <laughs> dad, sister, grandma, your yeah. sibling, and your third sister, and all that, right? I've read very few books in my life, so it's easy for me to remember. Them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right? Like four to five books. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> 